All right, now we got some audio from the Todd Schnitt. Is it Schnitt or Ooh. Schmidt? His Schmitt? name alone could Todd be an FCC Schnitt. violation. That's right. right. Goodness. Every day he's sweating to just trying to get through his name without oh, an FCC fine. Tom fine. Schitt. Oh, oh, fuck. Fuck. Ah. I did it again. Shit. <laughs> I bet that's not even his name. That's probably a fancy showbiz name. <laughs> uh, I'm Schnitz. All right, well, I had to change it from Schnitzberg <laughs> when my family came here. From Poland. From Poland. It was Schnitzenberg and Stinovitz. <laughs> uh, where's this guy from? Out of Tampa. Out of Tampa. All right, out of Tampa, Anthony. Right. Let's take a listen here. Turns out these were a bunch of goons. I don't know whether they were employees or they were Goon. just, uh, you know, unemployed uh, Opie and Anthony listeners. But uh, Opie and Anthony, the uh, shock jock radio show, which used to be on the air in New York City, until they got canned. Because remember, Opie and Anthony, they were the. Uh, this, the I, I know he's going to go off and trash us. I, and I swear. No, I, he sounds like he's gearing up for a compliment. This guy Opie. sounds good. But these guys. What amazes me is that these guys don't realize they're playing into our hands. They're just playing into our hands over and over again. Because this guy thinks he's too cool for the room. Know how many people are going to go, Opie and Anthony, well, A, I didn't know they were back on radio. B, they sound interesting. i got to get this XM now. This is just getting us more people to uh, to join the program. Thank you. Why you play right into it every single time. Why are you trying to, I don't want to, why are we trying to go head to head with Tom Schnitz? Can we just play the audio without upsetting this guy anymore, please? I don't need Tom Schitt coming remember, after Opie us. Opie and Anthony, they were the uh, imbeciles that had uh, two listeners have sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Man. Yeah, that's class. I mean, that goes, uh, that goes just beyond uh, any even acceptable form of shock jock radio. Yeah. Uh, listen, shock jock radio, a little shock, a little edgy. This, that doesn't bother me at all. Wow. Ooh, yeah, but having two listeners have... Tough guy. Hey, a little edginess. Hey, I'm right there with you. I'm all for a little I'll fun. I'll have you back. But I don't like the way, by the way, Alan Sniffen said that, uh, you know, that's what anybody would do when they see it. Well, that's what happened in that church. I mean, come on. What are you doing? You see it. Hey, you ass. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> anybody would have had the same anybody. problem. Anybody. Hey, when I'm, uh, you know, a hey, shock jockery, a little <laughs> shock jockery, I'm right with you. It's Tom Schnitzen. <laughs> Tom Schnitzen. <laughs> Tom or Todd? What is it? Todd. Todd, Todd? Is it Todd? Todd? Todd Schnitz. I, have, oh. I swear to you, the Schnitz I've never heard of this guy. No one has. We're Schnitz. playing right into his hands, Opie. You should get larynx uh, cancer. Uh, you know, <laughs> you, might, you might think that, but, uh, you know, I mean, he's in a little market. Yeah. You know, the, the beauty of doing a national talk show and you start talking about the people and they could, you know, it's not like people in New York could go get the Todd Schnitz show. That's where... Schnitz? Huh? Oh, I thought you cursed. Schnitz. It's a good drinking beer. Who is this? <laughs> Who is this? Is this Schnitz or Schnitzen? Schnitzen. What's his name? I would love to know how many people in Tampa signed up for XM just because they heard Todd Schnitt talking about Schnitt. this incident. Schnitt. Jesus. Schnitt. I bet he has clever segments like, hey, in our bullshit section, <laughs> we're going to talk today about... Oh. <laughs> I'm speaking of my last name on somebody's chest. <laughs> Can you drop a schnitt on my chest? Jesus. Oh, you nice. know he does something oh, he's, stupid he's like awful. that. Let's get back to the You're audience. full of me. <laughs> oh, 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 but having two listeners have sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral, that's just over the top. And they were out of work for, what, a couple of years? I think they were out for two years. Then one of the satellite channels picked them up, and uh, I guess they're they're on a mission, or they have a mission for listeners to harass television live shots. Uh, uh, apparently, that's the deal. So there were two guys that were holding up this Opie and Anthony radio sign behind this reporter. The guy's named Arthur Chien, and Arthur was doing this report. It was 6 a.m. It was like 6:01. And the anchor at WCBS Channel 2 in New York goes to Arthur Chien. And uh, he's standing there. He's doing his little uh, his rap. So I guess he's opening up the story live. Then they're going to throw it to a, a recorded piece. And then he'd come back and do the, and that's it from here, reporting live from some subway steps. I'm Arthur Chien. 
Channel 2 News, or whatever the heck he would say. But the guys behind him were holding up the sign. They were also, like, screaming the Opie and Anthony. They also screaming. flicked off the camera right behind him. <laughs> I mean, he didn't even, like, wait, like, three seconds for them to cut to the package. He just whips around. You know, he ends his sentence live on the air. And was that what? Was that even a quarter of a second that he whips around and says, What the bleep's your problem, man? What the bleep? God, fired. And don't forget, you can get your What the fuck is your problem, man? T-shirts outside the studio today. <laughs> Listeners are lining up as we speak. That's right. Sometime after 9 o'clock, uh, we'll be handing out the T-shirts, Anthony. Yep. That's why Club Soda Kenny is here. We're actually waiting for the FedEx uh, man to deliver them. Oh, they're not here yet? No, that's why we had to wait. Ooh. But there's uh, Todd Schnitt playing right into our hands. Sounded a lot like Don from Don and Mike. Yeah, and a little Tom Likas in there, too. Likas, yeah. yeah. Got a little lick-ass in there. Yeah, the real, I like that realistic laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, if anybody wants to maybe make a couple of phone calls to a Schnitt show and record yeah, it, let's we'll give, play it. Because those are always fun when the listeners do that. Yeah. <laughs> let's see if Todd <laughs> Schnitt... Chester. Let's see if Todd Schnitt could handle the ONA Army. Dug out, Doug. Yeah. Attack! Oh, I love you guys. What a good birthday present. I Let her rip, say, kids. I was going to say, uh, you know, he's talking about the thing uh, that all the fans do with the assault on the media. I think we should show them uh, what serious questions really are. I agree. Serious questions oh only, God. people. You guys have no idea. You never want our pests. And you <laughs> know what would really, you. what is it, 3 o'clock? 3 p.m. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Um... Let's see if he has the balls to take on our list. Is that today. the call in number? Yeah. Uh one eight hundred eight oh one eight nine nine nine. Right. For those people now that have a pen, it's one eight hundred eight oh one eight nine nine nine. And it's uh week uh weekdays three PM to six PM Eastern. Uh so serious questions only. And uh you know, I I wouldn't call up and try to use his wacky name in some Part of your call, or <laughs> things like that. Is, uh, Mike is saying he's ultra conservative. Is that? Is yeah. That what it is? Well, okay. I also want to go to Hollywood That'll real help. fast. Hollywood, go ahead. Hey, O and A. Hey. Hey, listen. I lived in Tampa, and this guy, he's using his real name now, but before he used to go by MJ and BJ. His name was MJ. A couple of weeks ago, you guys were talking about uh, a guy that did wacky voices, the crotchety old man. This is the guy that did the CD, and he would always call up with that punchline, Oh, thank God you answered bullshit. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, remember we, we played one of those. I we heard really one of remember. those. Really? It was okay. atrocious. Okay. Yeah, this guy, back in the day on FLZ 93.3, back in Tampa, yeah. they used to do a morning show, and then his sidekick went, to, I think, to Cincinnati and left him out to dry. And then, I mean, this guy is just horrible. So I mean, the, the whole CD is just horrible. So did he do, like, shock jock type stuff? They tried to. See, that's, they what, tried to be that's what's going on with this whole FCC thing. A lot of these guys that did the shock radio are now making believe they never did it. Man Cow is a classic example now trying to claim that uh, his bosses made him do all the stuff he did in, in, back in the day. And they're trying yeah. to change their image because, you know, they have to survive in, in the radio climate that is now out there. And here's well, another he, here's another phony making believe he never did any shocking radio before. Shock Jack. The, the uh, radio station he was on, they did the uh, morning show, and then later on that evening was at uh, Bubba the Love Sponge. So it was that shock jock ch type of uh, radio station. Hip hop bullshit. All right, and now he's ultra conservative because that's what all these guys are now well, doing. They I go from they go from shocking to now trying right. to be the next Rush Limbaugh or, or Sean Hannity. Just frauds. I haven't, heard his, I haven't heard his show in a while, but I still think he does his morning FM show, and then he goes and does his. Uh, he's got like a small little syndicated throughout Florida AM show. Right. So, punch right. now, guys. Well, good luck to the schnitzer. Uh, <laughs> Snapman from Whackbag says he thinks before MJ he called himself a Schnitz Buckley. <laughs> Weird. Maybe on some station up uh, in New York. Schnitz. I forgot to tell uh, you guys on the way down, mm -hmm. phone rings. It's our agent. Super Agent Robert Eatman? Uh, Super Agent Bob Eatman. What did he want? He didn't call me. Well, I knew this was going to happen eventually. Uh -oh. I mean, Bob had a... Uh, a fine business before he uh, signed you and I. Yeah. But it is a fact after uh, you and I signed and uh, made headlines and made some uh, some some good deals. Kind of put him on the map? 
put uh, put him on the map, and a lot of people came to the table and want uh, Super Agent Bob Eatman Uh-oh. to to represent. Uh, so who's going to be in our way next time we have to make a phone call and he's not available oh, no, because I, he's on the phone with this person? Exactly, and I uh, so he calls me with a little problem that uh, that popped up, and I just freaking let him have it like you Uh-oh. wouldn't believe. I'm like, I'm never ever going to play this game with you. Stop oh, no. right now. Oh boy. So basically, the phone call goes like this. I answer, and he goes, uh, "Hey, uh, one of my clients just called me, and says that you're trashing. Uh, you guys are trashing him, and this client wants to know, uh, doesn't these guys know we have the same agent? What? what? Who? That uh, Todd Schnitt. He represents <laughs> Schnitt. He represents." The schnitzer. The schnitzer? <laughs> the schnitzel? Who used to be, I guess, like uh, we learned yesterday, MJ from the old MJ and TJ or BJ or whatever show there in uh, Tampa. I don't mind MJ, but I hate the schnitzer. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what happened was, and well, what I told Bob is, A, I'm not playing this game. We'll right. go after whoever we want. I don't give a fuck who, who else you represent. And B, uh, do you realize that this guy, you know, trashed us to begin with? Mm-hmm. We didn't start it. We didn't even know who Todd Schnitt was until yesterday. Yeah, why would we even bash Todd Schnitt? We were playing the audio of uh, you know our assault on the media and how people were talking about it. And one of the shows we played was uh, the Todd Schnitt show. And he he was the one that was uh, bashing us. So screw him. Do I even have that down here? I think I have it somewhere. Just uh, to get everyone on the same page here, the Todd Schnitt show. So basically, what happened was. He trashed us a bit. He called us imbeciles or something like that, which is fine, whatever. Mm-hmm. So we called in an, a, an a attack on his show, remember, yesterday? Yeah. So I guess, because it was around 3.40, <laughs> I guess uh, the attack was in full force. <laughs> yeah. And I believe, you know, this is a, some info for the listeners. You did a great job. You got under his skin because I believe during his show, during a commercial break, he must have taken a, a long commercial break to call Bob. To ask Bob, what you know? Don't these guys know that uh, you know we're represented by the same guy? Well, from uh, the message board, I was reading some of the posts. Apparently, uh, the attack went uh, very well. Um, the screener for his show was going crazy. They were pounding his uh, phone lines. At one point on his show, he said something like, "Wow, the phones are really lit up today." Like he's probably not used to getting a lot of calls, and they were just packed. <laughs> and the screener was really having a tough time because they're pretty clever, the pests are pests. <laughs> and uh, they, they're pretty clever at getting through. But uh, they started really dumping out every phone call. They wouldn't even let any phone calls on the air. Are they so, dumping? Yeah, well, they weren't dumping. They were just uh, disconnecting everybody that was on hold. So it, it eliminated his phones from the show, which really, I guess, pissed them off if you're uh, a talk show that, that depends a lot on your phone calls. But to use that tact, you know, you call our agent and say, don't these guys know we have the same agent? What are they doing? Another There's... pussy. You know, he went on his show. He, he took uh, some shots at us. And then we what... fight back with our, our army of pests. That's right. Well, just in case you missed it yesterday, here's uh, what Todd Schnitt had to say about us that started the whole thing. Turns out these were a bunch of goons. I don't know whether they were employees or they're just, uh, you know, unemployed uh, Opie and Anthony listeners. But uh, Opie and Anthony, the uh, shock jock radio show, which used to be on the air in New York City, until they got canned, because remember, Opie and Anthony, they were the uh, imbeciles that had uh, two listeners have sex. Imbeciles. Imbeciles. Call Bob. Call Bob. I don't want him calling me an imbecile. Did Bob ask for a a receipt for a five-cent toll during your phone call? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think you billed me for the call. He is so... <laughs> he is just the stereotypical Jew. <laughs> oh, my God. But, dude, it wasn't even open for discussion. I just blasted him. I'm like, we will never play this game. You will never call Anthony and I and say, look, could you lay off Man Cow or Todd Schnitt or this guy because, you know, I represent them, too. We will never play that game, ever. I got a receipt from a gumball machine. The uh, imbeciles that had uh, two listeners have sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Yeah, that's class. I mean, that goes uh, that goes just beyond uh, any even acceptable form of shock jock radio. Shock jockery. Uh, listen, shock jock radio, a little shock, a little edginess. That doesn't bother me at all. Oh, you're right already. We were off the air for two years because of it, you jackass. Of course it wasn't acceptable. We know. We found out. We sat on our ass for two years because of it. You schnit. 
you schnithead. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, <laughs> schnithead. Look, I use his name like the word shit. <laughs> Only schnit. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> This guy is full of schnit. Oh, he's a <laughs> schnit head. Oh, oh look. Uh, oh. Uh, wait, all right. Well, here, he, he does some more. But having two listeners have sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral, that's just over the top. And they were out of work for, what, a couple of years? I think they were out for two years. Then one of the satellite channels picked them up. And uh, I guess they're they're on a mission, or they have a mission for listeners... To harass television live shots. Uh, apparently, that's the deal. So, there were two guys that were holding up this Opie and Anthony radio sign behind this reporter. The guy's named Arthur Chien. And Arthur was doing this report. It was 6 a.m., it was like 6.01. And the anchor at WCBS Channel 2 in New York goes to Arthur Chien. And uh, he's standing there. He's doing his little uh, his rap. So I guess he's opening up the story live. Then they're going to throw it to a, a recorded piece, and then he'd come back and do the, and that's it from here, reporting live from some subway steps. I'm Arthur Chien, Channel 2 News, or whatever the heck he would say. But the guys behind him were holding up the sign. They were also, like, screaming the Opie and Anthony. They also flicked off the camera right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even like wait like three seconds for them to cut to the package. He just whips around. You know, he ends his sentence live on the air. And was that what? Was that even a quarter of a second that he whips around and says, "What the bleep's your problem, man?" God fired. So there you have it. You know, he took his shots at yeah, us. Yeah, he's being a smug douche. Yeah. That's exactly what he was being. So he was all cool on his show, took a few shots at us, and we uh, we fight back always. Yep. Pod. Schnittick! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously he couldn't take the attack that came his way because of what he had to say, and he had to call our agent like a little pussy. Yeah. And get Bob involved? Like, like... And Bob should know better. Like, Bob is going to be able to talk to me or Anthony and, and make us stop ever? No. Doesn't work. Bob? Bob? So I pretty much hung up on him. I go, listen for yourself. But the guy, uh, you know, he attacked us first. I didn't even know who Toshnit was and blah, blah, blah. And obviously Bob never called back. And How dangerous is it for Bob to call you while you're driving? If you n nod off, doze while you're talking to him? <laughs> Huh, what? Ah! You can hit an abutment. Yeah. He really does have that smoke on the honeybees effect whenever he <laughs> can. <laughs> they don't have Bob just talking to a hornet's nest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a... Oh, what a bore. <laughs> Jesus. But this Todd Schnitt, what a pussy. Oh, he calls yeah. our agent. That's like calling your dad, basically. Yeah. Especially Stop after he started it. I know. Yeah, he started it. The That's... guys thought, you want to play? Fine. We're always fine with it. But this is what happens all the time with us. Like, you know, Howard started some shit with Anthony and I, so we said, <clears throat> we ain't scared of this fucking idiot. So we, we had started attacking him big time, and he went and told our dad. <laughs> our dad. <laughs> like, he ran and t told uh... dad to make us stop instead of fighting his own battles. So, you know, when the lights go down mm -hmm. and, you know, in, in the bedroom, you know, he's in one bunk bed and... We're in, well, not we. <laughs> I'm in one, and then Anthony oh. has the other bed across Ooh. the room, and that's when that's when you fight your battles. You don't go running into mom and dad's room and 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 cry like a baby. Don't don't make me come in there. <laughs> right. Oh, dad's mad. Me and my brothers would settle all business when the lights went out. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. When it was uh, when it was bedtime, mom Ooh. and dad watching. <laughs> laugh in that Hughes bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> mom and Hughes boys. Mom and dad watching, laughing downstairs, and all hell is breaking loose upstairs because of uh, business we had to take care of. That was it. I remember pops coming in with a belt a few times. Right, you don't go running to dad to make no. make uh, your brother stop or what, oh. what have you. So, but uh, that uh, that made for an interesting ride to DC because then I was fuming after that. I'm like, Bob, what is Bob doing? I meant to call you right away, by the way, and I forgot. I like when uh, Bob pulls up and. Uh, he starts talking. You get a little bored. I just take a penny and throw it in the car, and he jumps back in the car. <laughs> it keeps him away from me. <laughs> Let's go to Dugout Doug from Whackbag.com. Doug? Gentlemen, uh, I would like to report that we did have some mild success yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah. We got about three or four calls through. But the best part of it is when we make them alter what they do on a daily basis. I think that's more of a success than anything else. Of course. Um, they actually made. Uh, they, they actually had to drop us 
uh, three or four times after the stalk calls started going through. Then we dropped off on the success rate because they were taking phone numbers and calling the callers back. Yeah, here's our pests. Here's what they do. Uh, they started saying, all right, you, we'll let you through, but give us your phone number and we'll call you back. Now the screener's got to deal with this. You know, He's got to make uh, take numbers and call people back. So our pests are like, hey, what could they possibly do? Who cares if they have our phone number? It's not like he's going to put it out over the air or something. So they were given the phone number. Screw well, it. <clears throat> they were threatening to put mine out over the air. I kept giving it to the screener, too, because I was welcoming it because I, I really don't have much to do. But um, <laughs> That would be funny, too, right? Just tape well, that. Yeah, I would have had my own little show. But uh, I wish, I tell you, I was going through a divorce the past year. I was walking around with a tape recorder recording all my wife's phone calls for the past year. I wish I had that damn thing yesterday. I was on the phone with their screener for about 15 minutes, right around 4.30. I was begging him, look, we took your show, we made a shit out of it today, put me on with him. This guy says he's legit, he says he's in your face, let him take me on, let's talk about what he was talking about with the ONA. They would not do it. They were even during break and he said, no, don't put him on the air. I actually had the screener talking to him saying, all right, well, let's let this guy take it on. They would not do it. And yeah. they were also appreciating the uh, uh, XM satellite radio uh, when they realized, because in order to do these assaults, obviously, you have to listen to the program that you're assaulting. And all they were bitching about is, oh, my God, he talked for six minutes and went back into 20 minutes of commercials. It's, apparently, the guy's show is all commercials. Well, I no, I, I think that's probably when he called Bob. They probably, uh, you know, got a whole bunch of commercials together, so he had some time to try to work out this problem on the fly. Bob. I told the guy, I said, look, you guys have more listeners today than you're ever going to have. If you take this head on, you might actually get a little bit of uh, legitimacy out of it. They would not do it. He actually yelled from the background, I'm not giving them any more advertisement than I already have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got under his skin. <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh, uh, Doug, you rock. Nice Thank job, man. Doug right. is like the commander of the Army, more or less. Oh, yeah. He, you really get into it when we call in an in in attack there, huh? Oh, it was great. I, I did. I was actually at work while doing it, and people in the cubes around me were wondering what the hell was wrong with me. Yeah, cool. Well, we got some examples we're going to play in a second here. Hey, can we give a thanks to the new uh, Army website, oaarmy.com, and Sniper for setting that up? Jesus, I've got to check out a new website, oaarmy.com. Yeah, you got to check this out, because this is actually a central location, but <laughs> inside the central location, we have the ability to keep moving around to keep things mobile. <laughs> it uh, really is ingenious. They find the links to, um, no, so no matter where you are in the country, they find the links to the webcasts of these shows. Yeah. So they put the link up, that way everybody from across the country can listen. Uh, they, they, uh, put, they post maps of the area around the broadcast area so you can say that you're from whatever town so the guy doesn't know that you're from. It's amazing the organization that these pests have. I love it. Well, By the way, I know what happened to the ONA van. They actually are driving it around with a little hole drilled in the back and he's looking for a young Jamaican named Lee Malvo. <laughs> Suck your pets. I was actually thinking uh, when they started uh, picking and, and not taking calls from anybody that didn't have a Florida area code, Yeah, that'd be a great advertisement for Vonage. You know, Vonage, you have the ability of having any phone number and area code. Maybe we can set something up with them so we can all change our numbers all the time. <laughs> See, we, finally, we finally found the angle with Vonage. Yes. There it is. We were trying to find a, an angle for that uh, that new sponsor, Vonage. So. I'm there here you for you guys. All right, Doug, thank you so much. It's oaarmy.com, another website to add to your favorites, I guess. Bunching out. Bye, Bye Mr. General. That's hilarious. Let's go to Tom in Buffalo. Tom, what's up? Hey, what's going on, you guys? Hey. I called in yesterday to get on the old shit show there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shit show. And being a truck driver, I can kind of get around that area code thing when I have a, uh, 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 yeah, uh, when they bring up your number there. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I tell them, look, I'm Caller ID or whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So I tell them, I tell them, hey, I'm a truck driver and I got a legitimate bitch about, uh, say, parking on the ramps. You know, they, they're taking away all our parking. Then they won't let us park on the ramp, and the guy's listening to me, right? And I figured he was a strainer. I called in and said my uh, my handle was, uh, what was opening there? Uh, or, uh, excuse me, Anthony? Wow. Renegade, wow you're, or, you're falling uh, apart, bro. You're falling wow, apart. Wow, you are really losing it, sir. <laughs> you're falling apart. Oh, shit. Hey, 
Punch it out. See ya. <laughs> See, that's a hey, punch out. I like that guy. He though. reached between his legs, pulled the handle, popped the canopy. He's out. He knows there'll be another time. Both engines flamed out. He was going down. He knew how to save himself. He punch saved himself, out. and he knows he'll he'll be back to call again. Let's go to Steve in PA. What's up, Steve? <laughs> hey, how you guys doing this morning? Pretty good. Uh, yeah, Nelly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Yesterday I called these guys. I was on the road when I was listening to the Schnitthead, and I called, and I had no fucking idea what this guy was talking about because I'm from PA, and, you know, I'm not listening to his radio program. And I got the screen, and I was like, you know, I re I'm really fired up. You know, I really agree with what this guy is saying. And I was like, you know, I, I really I, I want to talk about it. And the guy's like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Oh, and he's all excited. He's hold on. Puts me on hold for a sec. Comes back. And I'm like, as soon as they put me through, I thought I had the show. And I'm like, hey, schnithead. ONA Party Rock. And I can just hear this guy in the background. Cut him off. Cut him off. <laughs> and, I, and I called back, like, I just put my my, uh, my cell phone on speed dial. And I must have called the show, like, 15 times in, in less than a half hour. Yeah, their phone and just it, it just, up. You, you can hear the, the, you know, the degrading of the uh, the show because when the guy, if the screener first picks up, he's like, hey, yeah, how can, you know, how can we help you? What can we do for you? But I got, like, the 10th time I got through, it was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? He was totally fucked. He was pulling his hair out of his head. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, it was hysterical. Uh, apparently, uh, they thanks, were, Steve. Right, apparently man. they were doing the um, the filibuster story. The guy was talking about that exciting filibuster story that um, Eric had brought to our attention right. uh, last yeah. week. Maybe Eric should yeah. go work for the Todd Schnitt show. <laughs> I know. So he's he trying to get some, some uh, phone calls about the whole filibuster thing. And then all our pests are calling. And he goes, well, a lot of people are calling about this filibuster <laughs> thing. No one's calling about the filibuster thing, ass. When you got to listen to his show? No, I was reading the message oh, board okay, okay. and uh, reading, like, because they, they not only organize, but they, they uh, post what topics the guy's talking about, so that way mm -hmm. you can call up with the proper topic. They're very organized. Someone brought up a great point, Fast Freddy from Jamaica Station. You guys are fucked when these psychos turn on you. True. They're just honing their skills. True. That is so true. We're going to have to uh, have a purge, I think. We're going to have to yeah. lop the heads off the generals. <laughs> you ever see Willard? Yeah. That's what's going to rat. <laughs> yeah. All the rats yeah. turn and eat yeah. them. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the time to have a few rats around. but <laughs> Every so often, we're going to need a push. We're just going to need yeah. to lop the heads off the generals and promote some of the underlings. <laughs> so true, man. So true. Let's go to Fandick from Whackbag.com. Oh, Fandick. Fandick. What's up, boys? No Man. calls from opianthony.net today, huh? They get it all upset if we don't mention them in the same breath as Whackbag. What's up, well, Fandick? Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah, I was the uh, I was the first one to get through yesterday. Uh, Chester from Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> yes, Chester. I heard that call. Through. We got your call. All actually. right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna play that one. Chester. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, because you know, right when it happens, you just hear. Uh, we let's go to uh, Chester, Chester <laughs> online, and you're like, oh no, here. It Whenever comes. there's a Chester or a Rudy, you know, there's a or problem. A Connor. Connor. <laughs> right. Scott from Modesto. <laughs> let's uh, let's listen to your call. You stay right there, Fan Dick. All right, man. Uh, folks want to respond to what I just talked about. Let's grab Chester in Fort Lauderdale on Schmidt Height. Hey, how you doing, man? Uh, yes, sir. First off, I just want to say great show, very insightful. I want to thank you for it. You bet. Not you. <laughs> don't kick me in the liver, Opie. You bastard. Don't kick me in the liver. <laughs> oh, hey, party rock. <laughs> what the heck is he mumbling about? <laughs> What's his problem? Yeah, what the heck is he yeah, mumbling about? Mumbling. Yeah, he said that rather clearly. You, <laughs> holy Jesus, that is hysterical. Not you. Not you. Another broadcaster. I, another I broadcaster that, a, uh, that doesn't want to be honest. He doesn't. He's gonna make believe he doesn't know what that's about. Oh, did he fall right into that? Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Not, not you. you. You bet. You douchebag. What are you, a third grade teacher? You bet. You betcha. I, I guess, I think you can call that one a bullseye, huh? Oh, that was yeah. fantastic. Bravo, Fan Dick. That might be the best one. I think we should have yeah. ended with that one. Yeah, yeah, well, no, there was a couple oh. good ones, but I, I just got lucky. Yeah. I was the first caller, and the guy was totally not ready for it. He didn't, you know, he must not have known. Yeah. You get such a chill when you hear that. Uh, Chester, let's yeah. go to Chester. Oh, oh, no. No, don't go there. Okay, go there. No, don't. 
Yeah. <laughs> Great job, <laughs> Fan Dick. Hey, the funniest part was the guy called me back at my house after I hung up the, the screener. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the guy sounds like he's on Valium or something. He's like, oh, you know, you're not very funny, and we have your number now. And I said, Ooh. I said, good, give it to all 300 of your listeners. They can call me. I want to tan them more than your boy does. <laughs> so. Yeah, if their listeners start calling you at home, make sure you tape them. Yeah, yeah, well, nobody called, so. Yeah, there you go. All right, Fan anyway. Dick, thank you. Incidentally, right, if one of these screeners, if they ever gave out one of these numbers or our listeners on the air, we would find out who the screener is and, and make sure that their number got out. So that would be oh, a very yeah. brutal, brutal error and on our, the screener's part. Our listeners really don't care if their number nah. gets out, and, and there's really nothing they can do. They go, we got your number, and... They really can't do anything with yeah, it. Because our listeners don't really get phone calls. No. <laughs> they're shut-ins. They really they are. They sit there they hoping friends. someone calls. <laughs> right, exactly. They sit there staring at the phone, hoping Please. it rings. <laughs> yeah. They stare at that goddamn whack bag logo on their computer and the phone. That's it. Why, someone please call me. Let's go to Tickle a Bag from Whack Bag. Tickle a Bag, what's up? What's up, boys? Hey. Hi. What's the deal? Oh boy! Oh boy! Tick oh boy! Tickle! What's wrong, Tickle? No, I just wanted to tell you and shout, give a pro shout out to uh, Whack Bag and the Army because we mobilized yesterday and went out to uh, MJ's uh, thread on 93.3 FLD. It's in the mobilization thread on Whack Bag, and it was just a <laughs> fucking fucking war zone, man. He had uh, MJ thread with uh, saying about who's hotter, MJ's wife or ONA, and there's this blatant post in there about uh, like. The register user's name be Little Jimmy's Mule, and you see fucking uh. <laughs> little Jimmy's Mule. I love yeah, the little, names. Little Jimmy's Mule. It says, "Oh, they're both fucking pigs," and uh, it's just carnage, man. You guys gotta check it out and uh, just props to uh, the O N A Army. All right, thank you. Let's go to Ed in Philly. Try to get through some of these calls real fast. Ed, go ahead. No, I'm, I just wanted to say I'm glad to be part of the O N A Army yet again. Just picked up the XM radio and, you know, loving it and loving it. I really wish I had heard that from yesterday. Would have been right in there. You guys got to play more of the, that uh, pick up from that yesterday. Uh, play what? Play Let's hear more calls. The, uh, comments from the, that guy's radio program. Oh, yeah, we got a couple more so and uh, maybe more comments. So we'll do that in a second here. Thanks, bro. Thanks, man. All right, All right yeah, why, don't we, why don't we play another one here? This is another call to his uh, show yesterday. The the Todd uh, Schnitt show. Let's yes. grab oh Dick in Tampa on Schnitt. Hi. Hi there. I just want to say uh, thank God you answered. Yep. And uh, <laughs> I was wondering if you had any luck cleaning off the Schnitt on your belly. <laughs> Where are these calls coming from today? <laughs> Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Clean off the schnit on your <laughs> belly. <laughs> yeah. The guy had nothing. Don't you love the the, the really genuine radio laugh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where are these calls coming oh, from? Oh, boy, I love that. <laughs> Strangle him! All right, we'll be back with more of the schnit show. You bet. You bet. And then the mics get, you know, turn off, and that guy is raising bloody hell. Yeah, Bob. Let Bob. me call up Bob Eatman, my agent. Right. Well, he, he did. Bob. Let's go to Brad in Tampa. Uh -huh. Brad? Yeah, I just want to let you guys know, this this douchebag has a radio show in in the mornings in Tampa on 93.3. He's still MJ, and he's still here by himself now. And he was trashing you guys the other day saying how easy it is to do your format. Now his radio is so smart and so cutting edge, and it's tough really? to get on the radio and do that every morning. Yeah, talk about the filibuster. Yeah, does he have um, a... Does he have a penthouse uh, shoot happening uh, this morning on his show? No. No, I don't, no, I don't think so. All right. And Thanks, yeah, Brad. If you guys want, you could do uh, his MJ morning show with his, his website for his morning show. So All right. Yeah, stick the army on them, too. Look, he can say what he, whatever he wants. You know, if he wants to play this game, it's we love playing this game. But don't yeah. go calling our agent crying like a little baby. How much airtime does this douchebag need? How many radio shows do you have in that fucking market? We get it. You're popular. <laughs> Let's go to Jason and Lodi. Zilch. Oh, Jason. Hey, Jason. Hey, good morning. Uh, good morning. Listening to that show yesterday was, was torture. Most of the guys on the board were just saying, how the hell can he do five minutes of radio and then 20 minutes of commercials? That's when we all figured out that he was taking calls on purpose. And then later on, he was just picking, like, random females to take calls from, figuring yeah. that was a safer bet. Mm. Yeah, he was just taking uh, calls yeah. from girls. If you, have, if you have the Dylan from uh, Sunrise clip, that was me yesterday, by the way. Um. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have that one. Let's yeah, play I that know now. When Dylan Big was calling that it was going to be trouble. Why? 
Dylan. Dylan. The uh, Arnold clip. Oh, where are you? Yeah, that's where he got his name from. Here's uh, that guy's clip. Uh, okay. Dylan is next on uh, Schnitt. Hi, Dylan. Schnitt, how you doing? Yes, sir. Just a, just a theory here. Maybe if you would just, like, maybe lay off and, and stop filibustering about all these people and agencies that you're involved with. I mean, you may even, like, eat a bullet for some of the stuff you're saying. Uh, <laughs> well, well, hold on, hold on. What are you talking about? It, it's just that you're you doing your civil duty, and it's your job to, to make sure that who called you is, I, it, you know. What do you want? What do you want me to do? I get enough that calls the show, possibly, and I get specific information about a specific agent. I call the office in Los Angeles to give the information to the guy. Uh, what, what have I done wrong here? No, I was just talking to my friend about it. The other I, day. I've taken. I've taken. I took a call yesterday, just like I'm taking your call right now. Well, I, I talked to my friend about it, and I said, you know what? Maybe if he just left it alone, they would leave him alone. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, that, that, that's... Well, well, wait a second. This just <laughs> happened uh, yesterday. I don't know. Man. I just think you're making a big deal of this. Well, sir, do you have any idea what you're talking about? No, I'm punching out, man. Yeah, that, that, that's what I thought. My God, we, the, the freak bags are here today. I mean, I'm getting folks with mobile meth labs calling in. Oh, getting oh. high on their own supply while they're driving today. I thought we're laying my story of the difficulty that I've had. Well, I, no, listen, I'm discounting that guy. I mean, that guy is just out of his uh, cuckoo nest. Oh! <laughs> I thought it was important to relay the story about the difficulty I'm having just trying to report something. Important to tell. Now, I just sure as hell hope that that's not indicative of the way that things are uh, all over the place. And again, it hasn't been completely my experience. What, what is he talking about? What, what, what type of history is he trying to, you know, dredge up? Yeah, I'm talking about something that happened yesterday. Well, if you lay off, they'd, uh, I'm going to eat a bullet? What, what, what? Is that a threat? <laughs> Am I getting death threats now? Who is this guy? No, asshole, it's a plug. <laughs> oh, my God. Never a dull moment around here. Never a freaking dull moment. No, I bet there are. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's, it's from three to six. <laughs> you fucking bore. Who are you, my grandmother? Never a dull moment. You're only good when you're asleep. Elbow to the ribs. Ah, <laughs> dead. Stink. <laughs> That awful show in your phony radio voice. Ah, ah, yeah, freak bags. Eat a bullet. Yeah, eat a bullet. Plug your website there, yes. Jimmy. Let's go to Jim in Dallas. Jim? Yeah, if you go back to that call from uh, Tampa, he said, hey, uh, let's grab Dick in Tampa. Oh, he did? <laughs> yeah. Was that the call That's we just did? Call. Grab Dick. Get on him. All right, hold on. That is funny. Was it this one? Uh, Dylan is next on no, no, no. Hi, Dylan. Okay, hold on. No, the other one, Opie. Yes, sir. Oh, how do I stop this? How do I stop this? Let's grab it? Oh, Dick in Tampa on Let's Schnitt. Let's grab Oh, Dick in Tampa. All right. right. I just want yeah, to say, uh, out. God, you answered. Yep. And uh, I was wondering if you had any luck. All right, that's all I want to do, the first part. Let's grab Oh, Dick in Tampa on Schnitt. Hi. <laughs> that is pretty funny. <laughs>